Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So in today's video I'm going to show you how to put the dots on the violin or the stickers on the violin so that you know accurately where to put your fingers. But before you do, I just want to tell you about my 1 to 30 violin course that I know a lot of you have no idea that I have. But I have got a 1 to 30 violin course that has been around a good while. I know most of you know that I've already got this course. Most of you probably watching this have already bought the course. If you have thanks very much I hope you're enjoying it but my 1 to 30 violin course guarantees to take you from a complete beginner to a very decent accomplished intermediate level or intermediate player so my 1 to 30 violin course is 100% downloadable so it's available to absolutely anyone anywhere in the world once you've downloaded the books you can print them out if you like or have a look at them on your computer your tablet or whatever but the point is once you purchase you can get going straight away and they do come with videos as well so the book series and the videos which are all available on youtube the good part is is that the first 10 lessons are absolutely free as well so you have absolutely nothing to lose i'll link the first 10 lessons underneath uh, everything that you'll need is in those first 10 lessons, all the resources, all the PDFs, all the backing tracks and everything. Once you've done the first 10 lessons, you will then move on to songbook one, which is this book here. Once you've done all the pieces in songbook one, you'll move on to the next set of books. Songbook one is great because it contains 10 well-known classical pieces that have been arranged for the exact level that you will be by the time you have finished lesson 10. So you won't have to go around looking for any bits of music or bits of music that are the, the exact level that you are because I know the exact level that you're going to be at after finishing lesson 10. So you'll go through the songbook one. Songbook one will just help consolidate everything you've learned in those 10 lessons. After that, you will then move on to tutorial book two, which is lessons 11 to 20. Once you've done that, you'll be moving on to Songbook two, which is 10 more classical pieces and original pieces, which are designed to be in the exact level that you will be after lesson 20. And then you'll move on to the final books, lessons um, 21 to 30, which are gonna be more technique based. And after that, you're gonna be doing songbook three. So my violin is an all encompassing course. So it'll teach you how to play the violin. It'll teach you all the different techniques, bowing techniques, fingering techniques, positions, technical work, scales, arpeggios, chromatics, all of that kind of good stuff. It teaches you how to read music as well. So basically it's an all encompassing course and there's nothing else you need. So all of those details will be directly linked underneath this video. Okay, so when I'm teaching my my lessons, uh, which will be in the one to 10 lesson course, which is where I cover this, I tell you that I like to put dots on for finger one and finger three. I don't really like those full fret um, stickers that you put on there. I think they're too confusing. I think they're quite difficult to get on and off the violin. Um, I also think you become a bit brain lazy as well because you're too busy looking at where your fingers are supposed to be. Whereas this gives you a little helping hand just to get yourself off, off and running with. But I still think there is room for the brain to kind of be working and the ear to be working alongside that as well. So the first thing you're going to need to get yourself are these little stickers. Um, now you just get these from, you can get them from Amazon, from your local stationer store. They're just little stickers, little colored dot stickers. If you don't have these, you can use like maybe those, those label stickers that you've got and just cut them into a sort of a small sort of circle shape, or maybe you could color them in with a pen for, you know, use whatever you've got to hand, any sort of type of sticker. Um, I've used stars before uh, I, when I was in a little bit of a bind. So whatever you've got, these are most ideal just because they are pretty much the perfect kind of shape and they're easy for you to sort of, you know, when you put your finger over them, it kind of covers them nicely. So these are the ones that re you really need to do you really need to get. If I can find them, I'll link them directly underneath this video. But this is where you're going to be placing them. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that your violin strings are in tune. If your violin strings are not in tune, these are not going to be in the right place because you're going to be putting the dots where your ear is telling you these strings are in tune. So if these strings are massively out of tune, then in order to get your fingers in tune, your dots are going to have to be sort of moving <laughs> up and down. So you need to make sure that your violin is perfectly in tune. The next thing you're going to do is 
play an open A. And then find a B. So that's a first finger on the A string. Now what you can do for this, and it might help you, is if you use one of these little tuners that you put on here. So I don't usually advocate using these tuners to work out what notes you're playing on the violin. I only really recommend that you use these for tuning up your violin. So you should never, never use these for checking your intonation. You should always be using your ear for that. Otherwise, you just become, your eyes and your ears become lazy because you're too busy looking at what notes you're playing on here. However, it's fine if you just want to check where your note is playing. So whichever tuner that you've got, it's always good to have one of these. I always have one of these and I do really like them. So if I play an open A, so my tuner is telling me that it's an A. If I put a first finger on the A, I'm gonna be looking for a B and my tuner is telling me it's a B. Now, let's assume that I'm perfectly in tune with my B, and it's here, it is actually where <laughs> the dot is, obviously, because I've already pre-put the dot on. This is where we're going to put the dot on here. So just remember where your finger is, grab one of those dots, and then put the dot on exactly where that finger is. Once you've done that, you can always just take it off and just try it again. <laughs> make sure it says a B, yeah, that looks good. We can even try the first finger on the D string and see if it says an E. And my tuner does say it's an E. It doesn't matter if the tuner is absolutely perfectly in tune, that's kind of defeating the object. We want it to be perfectly in tune when we're tuning the strings. So some of these have like, a, uh, the letter will go green when it's perfectly in tune, and this one has two sort of little um, vertical lines either side of it. When there's only one, it means it's ever so slightly sharp. When there's the other one, it means it's ever so slightly flat. So we're looking for a green letter and the two green lines either side it, and that means this tuner thinks the string is perfectly in tune. So it doesn't matter if your finger is not absolutely in tune, because obviously, you know, your finger is gonna be moving, but it's good enough and it's close enough for the ear to, to detect um, in order to put our dot on. The second thing you can use to check it out is if I give you a bit of a measurement. I don't always like people to rely on the measurement here because it might not be quite the same, but if I put this measuring tape just underneath here, just underneath the string. And if I put the measuring tape up to the nut, so we're just up to this line. So we're not going, we're not going up here. We're going sort of just under where you've got that ridge line. Then you'll see that, that dot, the middle of the dot, I've just drawn a line, a horizontal line in the middle of those dots, just so it's easy for you to see. So you will see that that line is around about three centimeters down. So the middle of the dot is going to be three, more or less three centimeters uh, down from the kind of the, that, that ridge, that nut there. So it's, remember, it's, it's not from up here, it's just from underneath. I, I mean, I guess you could measure it from up there. It, it doesn't really make a difference. If I measure it from the very top, then it's, it's round about three and a half-ish, maybe three and three quarter centimeters but I'm not gonna do that because I don't really know how wide this is on everybody's violin. Whereas I do know that if we're going back from this, this ridge here, then it's gonna be around about three centimeters. So I hope that is all in focus for you and that you can see that. So that gives you a rough idea on that. And then you'll see the other one is around eight centimeters from, from the top as well. So that should sort of give you a rough idea. If you are slightly unsure, you can always just sort of put your finger in and obviously play the note. So if you played a third finger, if you put your third finger on the, uh, on the A string, your tuner should give you a D and it should be perfectly in tune. I know I've just taken my tuner off, but your, your tuner should give you a D. And then if you put it on the uh, D string, it should give you a G. 
and it should be perfectly in tune. So I hope that's helped you with a little bit more accuracy in putting the dots on the violin. I do recommend that you put the dots on the violin. I do teach that way and I do think it's a really good way of doing it. You shouldn't be leaving those dots on sort of indefinitely or for really, really long periods of time, but just enough for you to kind of um, get your ear used to the intonation and your fingers used to putting uh, down on the strings where they need to go. I would probably say that by the time you get onto my book two, lessons 11 to 20, maybe sort of halfway through, maybe three quarters of the, of the way through, if you're feeling a little bit extra, a little bit bougie, you can always just take them off then and see, you ha see how you get on. If you are, if your intonation is going backwards, it's regressing a bit once you've taken them off, just put them back on again. There's no shame in that. But like I say, the stickers are okay. They're not damaging to your, your intonation and to your learning, but those full fret stickers are, and I don't like them. They're just confusing. There's too much of them. You don't need them. You need to do a lot of thinking yourself and your ear. You must rely on your ear. If you're always using your eyes to show you where your fingers are gonna go, you're never gonna be looking and you're never gonna be listening and taking that in. You're never gonna be getting the muscle memory from your fingers as well because you're always relying on where they're going. The eyes are constantly relying, the brain is dormant and the ears are just not functioning. So as soon as you take off um, you know, those, those long stickers, who knows, you don't know where your fingers are gonna be going because you're never used to, you've never got that muscle memory, your ears are never telling you, your brain's never telling you, your eyes are now looking at going, I don't know, I haven't got a clue. So you've got to put it back on and then the whole thing is going to regress. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's helped you a little bit. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.